Hi, this is Sherry from the Kevin and Sherry 300G videos. And I decided to do a little filming today, my first time using the HD camera. This is our 100 gallon reef tank. Here's my new cat, Baby. Hi, Baby. She's a Persian calico, very rare cat. Hi, Baby. Say hi. There she goes. All right, back to the fish. As you can see, this is a 100 gallon oak stand with top and bottom piece um, reef tank. We have all smaller fishes in here that are all reef safe, all reef compatible. We have been in the saltwater hobby for about two years now, a little over two years, so we're learning, but we've come a long way. And we educate ourselves constantly by reading the Bible, which is marine fishes and marine invertebrates, and we go on the internet frequently and type in what we want to know. And we find most of the information on the internet and through our fish stores locally. Anyway, back to the tank. Um, I was going to let you know what, what we have in it. Some of the wildlife and invertebrates. As you can see here, there's a large finger leather here, dark brown. I'm not sure the exact name of it, but it is a brown finger leather. Underneath the finger leather there coming out is our scribbled rabbit. Scribbles. And over here there's some chromies, uh, azure blue damsel, some other blue damsel, yellowtail damsels. Um, there's a little tomato clown up there, maters. Uh, yellow candy hog fish. There's our blue hippo, that's smurf. We name all our fish usually after they've survived a couple of weeks. We give them a title or a name or a nickname. There's the um, fairy wrasse just went into the cave there. Now you can see here there's a sea apple, a gorgonian tree. Gorgonian, I think that's how you say it. This red tree with the white polyps. This is a beautiful sea apple. Let's get the focus to come in here. It might be too close. Let me back away. And that has little tentacles that come out and filter feed daily. Well, not daily. Sometimes they don't come out and feed, but they usually do when they decide they're hungry. This is called a devil's hand. I'm going to back up a little bit. That's got some white crystalline, crystal looking polyps on it. It is the devil's hand finger leather. Right next to it is a green torch. Nice bright green, a little bit on the fluorescent side green torch. Down here is my green flower pot. I love flower pots. They're a little bit hard to keep. Oh, right there is my brand new, I got this for my birthday, which is in two days, purple Red Sea Tang. I love Red Sea Tang, purple Tang. I have another one in my 300 gallon tank. They're a little bit on the rare side now that we've had some mishaps over there in other countries. But I just got her and well, or him. I named him Virgo because I'm a Virgo and I got him for my birthday. Also, we have a Vrolic Rass there that just went by that is in the change period. It started out female and now apparently it is a male. Now back there you can see, well, there's a starfish on the glass and then behind that is some finger leathers, some um, brains. There's several brains in there. There's uh, a colt, I believe, finger leather. Uh, there's my cyanarina, another brain, and above the cyanarina is another tree, finger leather type tree. There's lots of mushrooms. Here, I'll zoom in on some really flourishing mushrooms over here in the corner. They're actually leaving the rock now and finding new spots to inhabit because they've grown so big and multiplied. And over here we have, of course, my little flame hawk. He's adorable. We've had him a long time. And lavender tang. That's violet. Up there is our rescue fish. That is our yellow tang that we used to call Nakey Boy because he had no fins and no tail when we got him. Now his tail has grown back almost completely. His top and bottom fins still have some work to do to get back to the way he should look. 
but his color is drastically changed for the better. He was off-white when we got him, was malnourished, came out of a tank that we used for our refugium in the garage, our 135-gallon refugium growing plants and keeping the nitrates down. Anyway, that's our trooper, we call him now, Mr. Trooper, the, the yellow tang. And there's Rolik, Ro, the Rolik Rass that we ordered, special ordered from Blue Zoo Aquatics. Started out female, now is finally turning to a beautiful bluish greenish colored male with red striping and red on his top and bottom fins. I'm more into the colors of the fish and trying to make the tank look uh, more colorful and exciting and organized. My husband's more into the health aspect or keeping the fish healthy and thriving, keeping the water temperature the way it needs to be, the salinity, the uh, chemicals, the additives and things that we have to use. And of course we buy many, many types of foods for these fish. We, we buy them every type of fish food possible. Um, from flakes, pellets, shrimp, mysis shrimp. We stay away from the brine shrimp. It's not as healthy. There's not much nutritional value at all in brine shrimp. So we do the mysis, we do prawns, human prawns that you can buy just at Walmart or anything. Um, we do the squid, the mussels, the clams. We buy clams on the half shell. And those are, those are really beneficial because we have some puffers over and, and triggers in the other tank that really need to wear their teeth down and they can chew on the shells when they're finished uh, eating the meat out of the clams. Anyway, that's the 100 gallon and there's a lot of different species in here, probably about 40 to 50 fish, small fish, and they can all hide in spots. They have lots of rock and caves and corals to hide in and there's many invertebrates in there, uh, snails, crabs, um, Lots of shrimp, live shrimp, there's flame shrimp, uh, fire shrimp, excuse me, um, cleaner shrimp, uh, there's many, many starfish in here, uh, there's sand sifting stars, just any kind of invertebrate that we can get to keep the maintenance of the tank to help with the sand and the uh, biosystem of the filter and everything we buy. Oh, there's a couple of freshwater mollies that we've, we've actually converted into salt water in our refugium. We have babies constantly. We sell them back to the fish store and we also use them for feeding once in a while, but most of the time we keep them as pets and turn freshwater mollies into saltwater mollies, which is a nice little addition. You can have a little school of mollies in your tank and we, we've created our own color which is kind of a orange and black Dalmatian dolly, uh, molly, uh, which is a different color than most of the fish stores sell. And over here is our pin. I didn't show that. This, this is kind of a neat coral. It, not coral, but invertebrate, I guess it is. It actually goes down in the sand at night and comes out during the day and kind of looks like a flower pot. Um, but it will get taller and bigger and grow as you have a deeper sand bed. We actually added more sand in this corner just for it to flourish because it does need a deep sand bed. Now I'm going to zoom in over here on the 300 gallon tank. Now that is our Fowler tank and everything in there is not reef safe. Well I shouldn't say everything. There are some reef safe fish in there but mostly they're not reef safe. They will eat coral, they will eat invertebrates, they'll eat anything that'll fit in their mouth because most of these fish are larger from about four inches on up. There's a few smaller things in there but most of them are average seven to eight inch fish and a few nine, ten. I think tens are biggest right now. We just lost a pair of Nassau uh, tangs that we had for quite a while over a year and for some reason they just didn't make it. Um, but there's our Red Sea Sailfin. Let me zoom in a little bit. There's Unicorn Tang, and there's two of those, two different types. One's a Blue Spine Unicorn. The other's just the Unicorn Tang, um, which that's another story. We bought Lucky, fairly reasonably priced at the pet store, because he was a rescue. He didn't have a tail. It was split and pretty jagged. A fish had eaten it. So we... Um, grew him up from a baby and now he has a nice unicorn on him on horn on his head and he's turned out to be a beautiful nice big addition nice fish 
And there's our bubbles, our clown trigger. Uh, let's see. There's, oh, our fox face rabbit. We got that from one of our earlier tanks that we bought. She was very t small, and she's grown up now to be a big girl. She's almost two years old. Uh, some of our fish we've had one or two years, and then some, you know, are new, newer fish that we've just recently purchased or replaced. But our longest living fish is actually our flame angel in our 100 gallon. We've had her since our very first 90 gallon tank. It was the first tank we ever bought when we started and switched over from fresh water to salt water. And she's still alive and thriving. And we've had other flames since her, and they haven't made it. So she just happened to be a really good one that has survived all of our, you know, water changes, changing tanks, and salinities dropping and increasing. And, you know, we've learned a lot over the years, but we have a couple of fish that have survived it all. Um, right there is a chorus that is getting huge. We've had that fish for over a year. Um, she's supposed to change, or he's supposed to change into a dark green color. He's two-tone brown. A uh, couple of angels that we had since they were juveniles, and they are now in their adult stages, which we are thrilled to see them go from juvenile to adult. I'm sure you know about the the drastic change that angels go through, starting with a like a stripe or a target pattern of blues and whites and blacks, and then they completely change to maybe a diagonal stripe or no stripes and a solid color. So we have a Koran in there and a Annularis that have both gone through their complete, well, Koran is almost completed into adult, but Annularis is complete now from a tiny juvenile striped fish to a striped diagonal adult. We have several hogfish that we just love their colors. They're really great fish, very hardy. Um, some more rabbits. We have a coral rabbit and lots of wrasses. We've just recently gotten more into the wrasses. My husband has a prize fish that I'll get closer up to show you. This is his red-breasted Maori wrasse, Tonga. And he got him from a special order from Blue Zoo Aquatics. And he is right there. Red and black and white striped. Beautiful fish. He's got some blue on him too. Now right there is Paddles. She's my wrasse I just got from an order, shipping order. There's our our little Leertail Hog, Lyric. We've had her for a while now. She started out really small. This is a prize fish right here. This is our Maculaceps Tang. We got him as a smaller fish, grew him up, and he has just flourished and turned into a beautiful fish. With lots of freckles on his face and and we call him Ringer because we thought he was a ringtail tang. He was sold to us as a ringtail tang, but he's actually a maculaceps, and he's worth a lot of money now if he, if he ever uh, we trade him in or find a buyer for him. But we'll probably just keep him, and you know we would never sell him. There's my other purple tang, and we have two yellow, nice yellow tangs in here. There's my green bird wrasse that used to be a female and did a sex change. Kevin talked about that in his last video. Here's Lucky, the unicorn I was mentioning earlier that that we got as a rescue that was really small and no tail. This is our gold spot rabbit. Gold, uh, what do we call her? I forget. It's so hard to remember all their names. The little blue blue wrasse there that just went by. It looks like a Crayola crayon. That's Bluesy. This is Goldie. Now we this was sold as a gold spotted rabbit, but it's not. It's actually a golden rabbit or something along those lines but it's not a gold spot my husband knows the names um, here's our bristle tooth tang down here in the rock she's trying to eat off the rock they love oh there's puff daddy we've had him quite a while he's the first puffer here's annularis our first puffer that we got to survive in this tank and he's been with us quite a while now probably a year year and a half we call him puff daddy and he's adorable he comes up and wags his little tail when he wants to eat here's some damsels a damsel fish which is kind of rare we've never seen another one it's blue with a yellow tail we really like that fish it's very calm and mild here's our australian clarkie 
clownfish, which we've had quite quite some time now, almost two years. She used to have an anemone, but fortunately the anemone didn't make it. There is a Lenny. Uh, let's see, that's a... I can't remember now <laughs> what kind of Lenny. This is my latest Ras. Let's see if I can get a picture of Finkelstein. I call him Finky or Finkelstein. He's a, a pink face Ras right there. Pink face. And he's got some pretty stripes. Bright pink, fluorescent pink with a green background. Here's Niger. Now we got this Niger trigger as a very tiny, thin, frail fish and she has just flourished and grown into a nice, big, healthy fish or maybe a he. I think it is a boy. I think he's getting streamers. Here's our blue cheek. Where is that? Blue cheek trigger right there. And there's our Cuban hog. That was a special order we had our fish store get in for us. Here's another uh, clownfish called a cinnamon clown in there. And cinnamon and clarky seem to get along just fine. Let's go around the front side. And in our old house, our last house, uh, our tank was three-sided. Now it's only two-sided, unfortunately. It, it's a small living room downstairs. We have a bigger living room upstairs, but the tank's obviously too heavy to put upstairs. This is Huma Huma, the Niger trigger, or the Picasso trigger we've had for a long time. And <laughs> that thing, that fish has been through, you know, a lot, and he's still alive. So we're really proud of him. We almost lost him. Uh, let's see, who else here? Oh, our little stripe puffer. Now, we started out with this striper puffer. It's a, actually called a manila puffer. And it was a tiny, tiny little guy. And we fed him, hand fed him in a small nano tank until he grew up big enough to put in here in the 300 with all the bigger, aggressive fish. And he's a, he's a little cutie. Well, that's about it. And this big fusilier my husband got. It's a nice silvery, we call him Phil Silvers. He almost looks like a rainbow trout that we go catch on our pontoon boat. But anyway, uh, this is about it. I've probably exhausted everybody with all the names and different fish. And here's Red Sea Self. And show us your big sail. Come on, boy. There it is. And this is Sherry saying bye-bye for now. Keep tuning in.